Hi, this is Francis Wade again from the Two Time Labs. I want to share with you the latest findings that I'm gleaning from Desi Wu's book, which is Temporal Structures in Individual Time Management. I have to write that down because I want to see it to remember. But as I said in my prior post, this is a great book. It's a breakthrough book in the area of time management. And there are a couple more points that I wanted to share with you in this short video. One is that she recognizes and talks about the lack of time management resource that exists. So I've written about it also and said that, you know, there's no time management conference. There's no time management journal. There's, I, I can't be able to find a single department in a university that's devoted to the topic. More than one or two people who have done different bits of research here and there. And I think the problem is, is that it's a multidisciplinary kind of field doesn't fall neatly into the industrial engineering department, sociology department, psychology department, um, management department, doesn't fall neatly into any of the buckets that already exist. She talks about the fact that there's a little research done and, and, and talks about some of the reasons why. And interestingly, one of the reasons why is that, unfortunately, time management research takes time. <laughs> it takes more time than people are willing to commit, especially with the lack of infrastructure that, that often exists around them. The second point that she makes is, a, is a, a much larger point, which is that there's a clear separation between what she calls good time managers and not so good time managers. Now, one of the points that we make here at Two Time Labs is that there really is no such thing as good or bad when it comes to time management. All there are are different levels of skill. So here at Two Time Labs, we talk about being a white belt, yellow belt, orange belt, or a green belt. Different skill levels in time management. And it's fine to be at whatever level that you find yourself at, simply because that might be exactly what works for you and the kind of life that you live and the kind of commitments that you deal with each, mail, each day, the amount of emails and get, the amount of calls that you get. But anyway, she makes the point that there's definitely a distinction between better and for want of a better word, worse. And um, she says there's such a thing called a time-urgent individual. And the time-urgent individual is someone who's committed to producing results in the future um, according to specific deadlines. She also says there's something called a future time perspective. And future time perspectives are held by people who tend to be goal-oriented. They tend to want to achieve specific results in specific time frames. And very different, she said, from what's called the present time perspective. People who focus more on the present moment, keeping their options open at any point in time. They don't actually don't believe that planning for the future makes sense because schedules change so much that you might as well not even try. Um, they take more risks and they act more sort of impulsively depending on what is coming at them in the moment. They want the freedom to be able to always choose and they feel that by putting things in a calendar would somehow restrict their choices in the future. There's some authors who actually seem to have the present, the, the present time uh, perspective um, and build their time management books around this idea. Fortunately, they also lose track of time. And what she says in her book is that people who, are, who have the future time perspective and are time urgent tend to produce better results. She says, what they do is they do more planning. They meet more important deadlines. They have more of a sense of control over what it is they're trying to accomplish. And they ex exhibit what she calls striving, which is continually going after more. They, they put up with very little uh, procrastinating. She says also that they have less complaints about not having more time. So they accomplish more and they complain less about not having enough time. She says the others, however, less effective, do have lots of complaints. They're way less likely to use their calendar in a way that, uh, it, that allows them to manage the items that are in it. And she calls these items, by the way, um, temporal structures. Fancy word that sort of lines up with the name of the book. But a temporal structure is basically anything that's in your calendar that helps you achieve your objectives or your goals. And she says those who are less effective don't use them. They might only have their appointments um, in their calendar. So they often fall behind at work and they often complain about that. And there's even a third group which are, aren't effective either. And what they do is that they've given up. 
They say, you know what? I can't get it all done, so I won't even try. I, so I, won't, I don't complain, but I've sort of resigned myself to the fact that I can't get all that I want done. I can't get better at getting more done. So let me just limit the time that I spend at work and spend more time with, um, um, on my own, on weekends, having fun, and not try to stress myself out so much. <laughs> Interesting. And then lastly, one of the points that she makes is that based on our research of students, administrators, and faculty, guess which group is best at time management? Turns out to be the students. Now why is that? She says, well, students are under way more stress, way more deadlines, and they have to also work with other people in order to meet those deadlines. Faculty and admin have the freedom of working often alone or setting up their own schedules. So they're sort of the ones who who determine when things get done. If they don't get done, no big thing, it's sort of up to them. But a student is at the effect of both administrators and faculty, and they have to meet deadlines all the way throughout their college life in order to be more effective. Interesting, because what I've observed is that students are pretty effective, but often what happens when they graduate is that they lapse. They lose the skills that they taught themselves in order to get the grades that they got. Maybe in sort of a frame of mind that why I worked so hard to get the degree, I don't want to have to work that hard ever again, it was way too much stress. So they throw the baby out with the bathwater and go back to being perhaps more like the administrators according to Desi Wu's research. So bottom line that she found is that effective time managers use their calendar and their schedules in a rigorous way. and. Um, goes for students who more closely mimic professionals than either faculty or admin and it goes for those among those among us who work for a living who are better at time management than those who aren't. So this is Francis Quaid over at Two Time Labs. To get more ideas just like this, stay tuned, keep tuning in. There's more videos coming out like this one. Take care, all the best.